freaky, isn't it? David Tennant joins us now alongside the show screenwriter David Wollstonecroft. It's freaky what you're going for. <laughs> was, um, that, was that your intention? I'm kidding. Not no, intentionally, <laughs> no. Exciting, maybe. Yeah. Exciting and thrilling. And, Do you yeah. think we could just get something out of the way uh, before we what would start that be? talking? Could you just put your plat over one shoulder? I'll give you and a then, brief, a and brief then, glimpse. Um, and then you, you need never think of it again. <laughs> well, it's just that it is slightly distracting. It, you're wearing that because... <laughs> I'm in the theatre at the moment. I'm playing. You look like a woman. Well, that's slightly what we were going for. I'm playing Richard II at the moment at the RSC, and there's a certain androgynous quality that we were slightly pursuing. So yeah. when you first walked in, I thought you had a mullet. Uh, no, it's much. It's much more elegant than Far that. Far grander than that, it's, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's because it's not unleashed at the moment. You can kind of see. Oh, you Kim at the RSC wig department will be furious. She was like, "Don't show the bit, the bits that are sticking <laughs> down the back. That's it, and it's full glory. There you oh. go. That's what it looks like on stage." David, did you see? Um, it, David in yes last night last night and fantastic would Superb. you like to give us a critical review no but <laughs> um, I thought it was magnificent no when That's I say critical criti review That'll I don't do. mean you know something that, a criticism I mean you know as a critic I wish they had more nights because it's it's really one of those plays that I'm a big fan of the history plays in general it's magnificent it's very pertinent to today as well kind of like profligate spending it's great well, and uh, you are, David, at the moment, uh, juggling very successfully uh, the television with the theatre. Mm. And, and obviously, we've got the two, the, this new drama coming mm. up. Is, is there any... Is, do you find it easy to jump? I mean, presumably, there's quite a quite different mindset around the whole... The, yeah, they're quite different jobs. Yeah, they, they're very different. The, the, the pacing of your day is very different. You know, the theatre's all about three hours of very intense work at the end of the day, whereas filming is sort of... It's about finding those intense moments through a, a, a day with lots of gaps in between. But, uh, well, that's part of the joy for me. That's what, you know, the, the variety is, is one of the great joys of this job. You've written this, David Wollstonecroft. Um, it is a question that people often ask lawyers and barristers. How do you defend somebody who could be guilty mm -hmm. of a really sickening crime? And how do you go to bed at night? Mm. And how do you cope with the fact that your brilliant defence could let that person walk free absolutely and that's what you decided to tackle that's the moral universe of it it's there's a sort of morality play element to it it's a thriller basically I mean it's it's about this lawyer Will Burton who gets people out of tight corners there's a defense barrister and he's so good as a job a kind of Lionel Messi of the law he just can't help but score goals mm. and he gets somebody off that maybe he shouldn't get off and then it's about seeing the sort of path of that bullet to the end and all the repercussions Ashley Jensen who plays Will's wife Kate it's like seeing their family together and mm. what happens when the outside world comes in really mm. uh, people often say David that actors and barristers are not a million miles apart oh, well, I, I, they love yeah. the sound of their own voice they, they <laughs> like an audience <laughs> they, uh, they would, just no. can't stop uh, do you think that's true I think undoubtedly there's a huge element of performance in it and you know, we both spent time at the Old Bailey and we, we, we had uh, uh, a, a QC, Andrew Jeffries, who was our advisor on this, who was brilliant, and he himself said, oh, we're all actors, we're all, we all have huge egos, absolutely, that's part, of, that's part of the job. And when you say to people like that, you know, you've got somebody who potentially has committed a murder, more than one, something, you know, worse, mm -hmm. um, what do they say? What's, what is the justification? Honestly, everyone deserves a defence, that's mm. how the legal system works, mm -hmm. you get two people who know what they're doing, having at it and it's the jury who's going to decide who's guilty and who's innocent it's up to your jury of peers did mm. you ask you know what happens if you think that they are guilty or they may have yeah I may have and asked what's that question. the answer it's dramatized possibly yeah tonight at nine o'clock no it's 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 that <laughs> sense of um it's really it's it's literally the rules it's just if you say that you're innocent no matter what my suspicions are as far as more just i need to be able to put forth the case as yeah. best i can I tell you one of the things that I, I'm noticing in a lot of the, the very successful dramas, uh, it, it, some of the crime dramas, some of which you've been involved in, yeah. others Broad like Church. The Fall, um, Broadchurch, of course, the, the way they're written, the, almost like the domestic side of them, the ordinary people who get wrapped up in events, mm. seems to have got better and better and stronger and stronger. And you know, it sometimes makes it very hard to watch. I know a lot of people said The Fall particularly, they found quite a struggle to watch because it was, you know, the, the bad guy seemed to be such a decent guy that the, the nuancing of crime mm. writing now seems to have got yeah, almost makes, richer and richer. Yeah, that's what makes it so juicy, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. The fact that there's a lot of courtroom stuff in this, but then, uh, as you see, Ashley Jensen plays my wife and um, Gus Barry plays my son, and that's mm. that, that, that the family element is 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 just as important, probably even more important in this drama than, than what was on in the courtroom, yeah. Mm. Um, you've got another drama coming up. 
the 50th anniversary Doctor Who? Uh, it, uh, maybe, yes. Are you in it? I, I, what am I allowed to tell you? Right, what I, are I can you never remember. Let's let's see how many details we can get out. There yeah. is going to be an anniversary. There is, and there I, is a special programme. There is a special programme on the 23rd of November, and I am in it. I think I can tell you that much, yes. Can you tell us what you do in it? Um, I, I, I play a character I may have played before. A doctor? Uh, Maybe, yes. <laughs> Medically uh, qualified. Uh, <laughs> Medically qualified, yes. Uh, there's me and Matt Smith. We do, we do stuff together in it, yes. It was great fun, actually. And apparently you got on exceptionally well, <laughs> and now you're trying to find ways to work together again. <laughs> Is that true? That would be fun. We did have a really good time. It was quite nerve-wracking, because I thought, you know, it's, it's his watch now. He might be... I don't, want to, uh, I, I don't want to be rocking the boat, but actually he was so up for it that it was uh, it was great fun 50 years is a long time isn't it i guess writers everywhere I, was it was it an inspiration for you doctor who was it something that's kind of engaged you as a child that made you think you know it's you know it's funny i was talking to somebody the other day it's it's um i used to hide behind the sofa there's one particular episode when some they, there's on a spaceship and people turn into slugs that was mm. particularly I, I don't know the name of it but i was i was a big fan mm. and um the escape artist some is is almost uh, people are hiding behind the sofa to watch this hilariously mm. it's a kind of there's a something you try you kind of sort of recreate you're right that's exactly right it, it, i have to say that uh, um we had this amazing director brian welsh who who did this kind of hitchcock thing where you just these little details mm. that become sinister it's like the ordinary your ordinary world starts to have a different um impact on you and even though it was sci-fi doctor who had the same thing you it, you didn't feel it was something alien to you to coin a phrase when you finished being the doctor yeah you were everywhere uh, you know i mean it, it was we were interviewing you you were being interviewed everywhere what was there a moment after that when life was a bit tricky and empty? Because I can imagine it was such an intense experience. Yes, but it doesn't really stop. Doctor Who doesn't really go away. Um, because the fans are always Yeah, in and touch. because people always want to know about it. You know, like mm. we're talking about it now. It's yeah. just one of those things. It's one of those things that, that even people who don't watch the show are interested in. Mm. It's just... Um, uh, and I've been lucky to keep doing, you know, things li like this have come up. So I, I, I've been fairly uh, busy. So it's felt. So let's just go down the the sofa. Uh, favorite Doctor Who ever? <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Is he uh, just saying that? Uh, <laughs> Who is your favorite? No, ever? because. <laughs> Yeah. This is um, perfectly reasonable answer, David. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Peter Davison for all sorts of reasons. Yeah, oh. of course. <laughs> well, yes. without Peter Davison, there where, wouldn't where be would other we, elements in your be? life. Quite. Quite. <laughs> what about you? Well, the thing is, David is my favourite doctor. God bless oh, you. I'm glad I came all the way yeah, here today. Him. I literally cried. <laughs> I've got a special bit, a bit of me for John Perkway. Sure. And I think so much of it is about the, the, the age you were when you most watched it, if you yeah. know what I mean. I love the fact, Charlie will never say, even though we are speaking honestly, you would never say the diplomatic answer. You just, you just say someone else. Oh, no, would you, do you want me to just go back over again and say, you, it's you, we all agree. I appreciate your, your candid approach there. <laughs> um, it's well, no, I'm not saying you did a it's bad fine, job. It's fine, move on, no. let's not linger. You back on stage tonight? I am, yes. Well, we appreciate your time travelling to come here this morning. It's a, pleasure. it's a pleasure. Just give us another flick of the plat. Oh, it's got everyone a kerfuffle this morning, <laughs> isn't it? And thank you for giving us more terrifying moments on television. Yeah. You're very well. The nation will be <laughs> very well. Great to see you both. The Escape Artist begins tonight, 9 o'clock, on BBC One.